Hi, everybody. So today's Talk Rx is a really special guest. This is my little niece, Simran, who's invited us all into her room with her little teepee in the background. And um, she is going to teach us a little bit today. Uh, at the end, Sim, I'm going to ask you for some of your lessons and your takeaways. But I wanted to tell that story about when you were in kindergarten. And do you remember when your friend, by mistake, bit you? Yes. <laughs> And we got a phone call when we came home. So um, in your school, when you were in kindergarten, you were five years old. You're eight now. But when you were five, how did the teachers teach you to be quiet? What did they do? They would give me a symbol. Okay. And uh, speak up loud and tell people what kind of symbol would the teachers teach you? So oh, so go like, like this. Zero. What is it? Zero. So zero. zero noise. So when, when they put their hand up like this, it means zero noise. Okay. So one day we got a phone call from Simran's teacher um, asking my younger sister, which is her mom, um, what she did for a living. Uh, and she said, oh, what did Simran do today in school? Why are you asking? And she said, well, it was really interesting. And she started to tell this story. So Simran has a friend uh, in school who was telling her a story, and you can imagine that friend sitting in front of her, looking at her, so she can't see anyone behind her. And her teacher, Miss Babbage, is standing behind, um, is standing behind, and her friend Keisha is telling her a story with her back to the teacher, and she's really excited. She's really excited, and so she's telling the story, and Simran's listening. She's listening, and all of a sudden, Miss Babbage does what? Comes up and says. Behind her friend, she puts the zero noise. So Simran puts the zero noise up, but her friend's really excited. And she's telling the story, telling the story, and she wants to just finish it. She's in the middle of the story. And Simran takes her hand and does the zero noise right in her face, right? Like, oh. And when she does that, this little girl bites her hand. Oh, my goodness. As soon as she bites her hand, Simran starts crying. The little girl starts crying, and she gets up, and she runs out of the room, out of the classroom. Well, then her teacher comes running over to her, and she says, Simran, Simran, are you okay? And Simran says, I don't know, I don't know. So the teacher has her move her hand, and it doesn't look like there's any blood or anything like that. So they just, her teacher says, well, Simran, it looks like you're okay. And Simran says, Miss Babbage, if Keisha's not okay, she's outside crying, you and me, we're not okay. So she takes her by the hand, and she takes her outside, where her friend is crying and this little girl's having a full meltdown and uh and so uh the teacher says hey keisha simran wants to talk to you she wants to say something and keisha says no 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 and do you remember what you said to her simran mm, i kind of do okay i want you to share it you want me to say it okay well this is what the teacher told us she said that you put your hand on her shoulder and you said it's okay, Keisha. It sounds like you need to cry it out or yell it out. And when you're done, I want you to know that we're inside in there and I'll talk it out with you when you're ready. And she turned around and walked back in the room and the teacher said she was absolutely stunned. And I'm so proud of you because you know that we're all connected, right? Like all of us in the world are all connected. And so when one of us isn't okay, then you're not okay, right? And so I love that in conflict, you were willing to lean in and you were willing to be with the emotions and you were also willing to give Keisha some time to be with her emotions. Did you then uh, make friends with her again? Yeah. yeah. So tell me some lessons that you've learned um, about emotions or what's important. What's important? What are some lessons? Well, it's called empathy. and it's Empathy? And the most simplest way of phrasing it is actually like pretending that like you're in someone else's someone else's shoes. Oh wow! What's, now where did you learn that? Because that's not how I say it. So tell me where you learned that. I learned that from my new school. Oh, in your new school. And so, if there was one of the most important things you think that could help kids in communication uh, with each other besides empathy, what would it be? What do you think about Just emotions? Communicate with other people about their feelings and your feelings. So like really listen to them and like be recognize with, their feelings. Recognize their feelings and whatever they're feeling, it's true, right? And sometimes if someone's having a really strong feeling in the moment, 
you let them have it, right? You let them yell it out or cry it out. Sometimes do you have to do that? Sometimes. Yeah. Well, I'm really proud of you, and I'm so glad. Do you remember some books when you were young that helped you that I used to read you? Happy and... Oh, uh, and sad monster. Yes. And butterflies in the stomach. And your butterflies in your tummy to help you with your anxiety. Um, bye Bye Butterflies was the name of that uh, by Lilita. Um, I'm blanking. I think it's uh, Madison, Lilita. And the, it's not about books. And the, hey, Munchkin, <laughs> we can give people resources. We get to, say, we get to tell, tell them whatever it is that helped us. And then you're talking also about sad monster, glad monster. So I think if we could teach children uh, young to lean into their emotions and to care about other people and that we're all connected, we'd have a totally different world. So thank you, Munchkin, for doing this with me, being such a brave soul. And thanks for letting us into your room. Okay? Love you. Me too. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye, Matt. Uh